In this video, we're looking at a projectile motion problem, and then it's combined with a 1D kinematics problem. So the whole premise to this is that we hit a golf ball off the ground with a launch speed of 40 meters per second, launch angle of 45 degrees. At that exact moment in time, the golf cart is right next to the golf ball, and it takes off with a constant acceleration, attempting to catch the golf ball as it lands. So then the whole strategy for the problem is we'll solve the projectile motion problem first. We're going to find out how long the golf ball is in the air and how far it goes. And then in part C, we're going to compute the required acceleration of this golf cart so it can catch the golf ball. And before I do anything else, I'm just going to get velocity components on my initial velocity. And V0x is a 40 cosine 45. And to three sig figs, that comes out to 28.3 meters per second. And the nice thing about a 45 degree angle is that the y component of the velocity will have the same magnitude, also 28.3 meters per second. And then I go into my flight time calculation, and I know the final y coordinate for this golf ball. That's y equals zero. So I look at a vertical analysis in order to answer this question. And I know the initial and final y coordinates for this golf ball are zero. As usual, I'm assuming here that the origin was placed at the launch point. So I'll just go ahead and put that in explicitly real quick. And so I end up with 0 equals 28.3 g minus a 1 half g t squared. And we're just using 9.8 for g. So I have a minus 4.9 t squared. And this is a factorable quadratic equation. I pull out a factor of t. And I get two solutions to this. And one is by setting that factor of t equal to 0. And the other one is found by taking the 28.3 minus 4.9 t and setting that equal to 0. And that first one, of course, is the extraneous solution, where the math is really just telling us one moment in time where y was equal to 0 was the launch point, but we're not interested in that. Then when I go looking for the other value of t that makes this equation true, I can just add the 4.9t to both sides of this little equation, divide by 4.9, and I've got to 3 sig figs, t is 5.78 seconds. In part b, I'm asked, how far does the ball travel horizontally during its flight? And so I look at the horizontal position as a function of time for the projectile. And this is really just a constant velocity equation because the x component of the velocity of a projectile never changes. The initial position is 0. And so my final position, which we could also call r for the range, it's going to be my x velocity of 28.3 meters per second multiplied by how long it flies, which is 5.78 seconds. And to three sig figs, I've got 164 meters out of this. Finally, we get to this sort of wacky new question in part C. What acceleration does the golf cart have to have in order to catch the ball right as it lands? And so I know the distance the cart has to travel. I know how long it takes to travel that far. And I'm just trying to solve for what's the constant acceleration that gets that done. So there's my equation for the position of an object accelerating at a constant rate in one dimension. And I know my final position is going to be 164 meters. My initial position is zero. The golf cart starts from rest, so my initial velocity is 0. And then I have this 1 half a t squared term. So a is what we want to find. And then I know the time it takes to get to this final position was 5.8 seconds. So I just multiply by 2 on both sides, divide by 5.78 squared. And I get an acceleration for the golf cart of 9.82 meters per second squared, which is about as fast as a drag racing car would accelerate. So it's a very powerful golf cart. And we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.